Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again for Fantasy Football Real Talk. That's FF Real Talk. Um, this will be the second video. First one I did, um, in case you hadn't seen it, it was about uh, snake drafts and uh, how to make the most out of them and what to do uh, to get the best results from them. Uh, this um, episode is going to be about auction drafts. And in general, uh, they both fill the same void. You're fielding 16 players, and we're talking about standard leagues uh, fair. You're fielding 16, 16 players on a team, and, every, and the thing is over when everybody has all their players filled. But it goes in a completely different momentum and a completely different way than standard drafts. Auctions are based off everyone, and, and again, just like in the last video, I said basic. What I'm talking about is basic ESPN standard fare. So uh, everyone in an auction starts off with uh, 200 uh, fab dollars, which is uh, fantasy auction books, and uh, it's 200 dollars that you have to field your entire team. The beauty about auctions, unlike uh, standard drafts, is everyone has a chance to get everyone if you want them. If you want Adrian Peterson, you got the money to get him. If you want Jamal Charles and nothing's going to stop you from getting him, you can get him. If you want Peyton Manning, you know that quarterback is who you want, you have the opportunity to get him. Get him rather. And you are best no other type of draft situation gives you that much fl flexibility and uh, that's what makes auctions fun. And everybody is par for the course. You are you have the chance to get everybody. But that's not how it works, though. Again, you have $200 to field an entire team. So say some two players in a draft wanted Adrian Peterson really, really, really bad. And Adrian Peterson's pre-draft value, and they have that specified on the side of the player's name on the uh, pre-draft rankings when you're in the, uh, in the, uh, the, the draft field, uh, if his value is about $55 or something like that, but two players are really gunning, they're really going bidding, it's a furious bid frenzy, and they really want Adrian Peterson. And somehow between the last two guys that took it up, they took Adrian Peterson up to $75. And that one guy that wanted to do it, those two guys rather than the one guy that went from 74 to 75, going once, going twice, sold, he got Adrian Peterson. He got the guy he wanted, but he paid $75 for Adrian Peterson. Now you have 125 to field 15 more spots. Is Adrian Peterson worth a lot? Absolutely. Is it smart to possibly pay anywhere in the 50s up to possibly $60 for Adrian Peterson? Yes. But $75 for nobody is not smart. You don't, you don't pay. You want to make your cutoff. I, I'll tell you what. I know certain people there's cutoff that say, well, you know what, I'm just going to sit out the beginning of an auction because I know all these players are going to be going for ridiculous values and I'm not paying more than $40 for a player. I know some players with people, rather, with that strategy. And it's a, it's a nice one. That way you can field a, very, field a very solid team across the board. And then there are some players that's like, I'm going to take, put big money in three or four spots in my starting lineup, and then we're going to fill the rest up with dollar players. Several strategies there. So in theory, you can have Adrian Peterson, Jamal Charles when he comes up, and Peyton Manning when he comes up, and if you could, maybe even Calvin Johnson. But that's going to be all your money. So that's not how you play. It's just, it's just not. It's not going to be conducive to you having success. So you got to come with a strategy of what to, of how you want to approach this. And I'm going to be looking at this as I'm, I got little things, notes set here for things I want to bring up. Um, so yeah, you kind of understand the money thing. Um, again, you can, you got two hundred dollars to spend, or however you want to do it. It's just gonna it's gonna give you a draft um, maximum bid at some point because you got to field all sixteen. It's not gonna let you populate till the money's gone and that you populated ten players, and uh, after that you just have ten, and then you got to go to waivers to get the rest. You got to have all all spots have to be filled with the money you got. So. Um, that's why you got to have a strategy. And I would say 
besides me just telling you the basics of it, strategy wise, the first thing to do is this. Break it down to where you want to dedicate three or four good players for a hundred dollars, and then the rest of the players. So that if you choose four, that you're gonna make sure a hundred dollars goes to four, whether that be sixty for Adrian Peterson, fifteen, fifteen and ten, or something like that. Um, it, you can do that. And then you got $100 for the rest of the field. Or however you want to divide that up, you can do that. Just set your limits of what you want to do. Me personally, I dedicate $100 off rip for three players or so. And that way you can get a $60 Adrian Peterson and a... Twenty dollar, you know, nice receiver, and then another twenty dollar nice receiver, and come around and get a quarterback later. Or it could be sixty Adrian Peterson, you know, thirty dollar quarterback, and then you know, ten dollar something. You know, ten dollar player will get you a lot if you're patient. So, bottom line is dedicated, and it doesn't have to be a first hundred dollars. This guy could be maybe a hundred and twenty dollars for top four guys or three or four guys, and then you got 80 to work with, they're still doing okay. Bottom line is you just don't want to pay top dollar for the first three picks, meaning don't do $60 on Adrian Peterson, then $60 again on Jamal Charles, and then now you're at 120 and you're down to 80 bucks, and you got all these players left, and you've only got two on your team. One big money player. $60, if you're going to say you're willing to spend somebody for $60, if you're willing to pay $60 for somebody, do that one time. If you're willing to do $60 and $40 and you got a top notch, um, say you're able to get Adrian for $60 and then get AJ Green for $40. That's cool. you $100 for two. But you got to start budgeting as you move down. That's what it's all about. You got to pay attention to the energy in the auction, and that's what we're about to get to in a minute. Um, have a game plan when you go in there. Like I said, that's you got the hundred dollar specification, but here's the best way. The, the, to me, fantasy auction success is based on nominations. Who you put up there for people? Oh, I didn't explain that. Like in standard drafts, everybody has a selection that's going this snake style. Um, in auctions, it rotates, you know, 1 to 10, and then, you know, 1 to 10 again or whatever. And each person has to nominate a player. If you don't nominate a player, auto draft will nominate it for you. <clears throat> but you put a player up that you want people to bid on. There's strategy to that. Put up players that you are not willing to pay more than a dollar for every time you nominate. When you nominate a player, always nominate a player you've never spent more than a dollar for. So that goes for easy. That makes for easy fare for me. I'm gonna always nominate a kicker, a kicker until I land my dollar kicker. First person I'm gonna throw up, Matt Prater. And what's gonna happen? It's because Matt Prater is the number one ranked kicker. Somebody's gonna bid two. Somebody's gonna bid three. And for, I've seen Matt Prater's rent, um, dollar value go up to $10. And to spend $10 for a kicker, you, because you drafted a great strategy by nominating a kicker, you just forced somebody to spend $10 on the least valuable position in fantasy. And there isn't a single kicker that's worth more than $1. And at the end of the day, you'll be able to get them for $1. Get, get a solid one for one dollar because they're about all the same. So that's what you want to do. Always nominate somebody. So Because what in theory what you want to do is you nominate Matt Prater and you if no one's stupid enough to jump in and go on top of that, you got Matt Prater for a dollar. But don't nominate him and then somebody do two and you do three. Stop there. Your point is to land nominations for one dollar. And this is from the start. I just told you my first one. This is from the start to the very end. Not only only nominate players you're willing to own for a dollar. Let everyone else fight them out. 
And what that means is early on in the draft is going to be people you're putting out after you landed your kicker, people you're putting out you don't really want. Or after you've landed your kicker, you put out a defense that you think you can land for the Rams. Well, for the for, for excuse me, for I was about to say the Rams, uh, that you can land for a dollar like the Rams. I throw out the Rams after I've landed my kicker, and by that point in the draft, people are tired of spending their money. You'll land a really good defense for one dollar. Don't throw out the Seahawks because what's going to happen is. They're going to jump all in and just topple that one, and they're going to pay. That might be strategic enough to uh, to uh, for you because you'll get people to overpay for the Seahawks. But the reason why you don't nominate the Seahawks is because you want it to be less money coming off, more money coming off the table, and then the Seahawks might be down there at the bottom for a steal. I've seen that happening lately where the 49ers are going for $1. So, that's something you want to do. Nominate stuff you will only be willing to pay a dollar for. Kickers, defense, players you don't really like. Um, you should always know the tier of the players and with the amounts of money you're willing to spend. Like I said, with Adrian Peterson, Jamal Charles, and Sean McCoy, you're willing to within the 50 to 60 range maybe. Good. Calvin Johnson... Uh, Demarius Thomas in, a, in the second tier of running backs like Matt Forte. Matt Forte might be in the 50 to 60, but uh, uh, Eddie Lacy, Le- Le'Veon Bell, etc. You know, you might know um, note that you're gonna no, go no higher than 40, but with Calvin you probably go 50. Uh, Demarius you might go 48 to 50. Just have a tier set up for what you're willing to pay for a certain amount of players and kind of have it in your head throughout the process all the way when you say you'll get to no Sean Marino you know you're not going to pay more than a dollar for it kind of have it in your mind and know what you're going to do and that'll just save you a lot of time um never bid what you're not willing to spend I can't stress that enough some people in auctions They think it's smart, and it is sometimes, to push a bidder. You see somebody who desperately wants somebody, so you keep adding a number on top of it, a dollar more. And then they'll come in and add a dollar more, and you keep doing it, keep doing it. You keep doing it, you're going to be stuck with that player. So never add a dollar more to top somebody if you ain't willing to swallow that. Be watch People will do it enough for you, for you to not get stuck and have to do it yourself. Always never just know to never bid anything that you're not willing to eat and pay for. Um, as I said, when you nominate bench, when you nominate early, you nominate for a dollar or whatever. And that includes not just kicker and defense. That includes pay, players you want to fill your bench with. Say players like Terrence West. As it gets towards the end of the draft, throw them out there for a dollar. People are going to be real tight on spending money towards the end. Um, and you'll land Terrence West, uh, an upside player for one dollar. And that's good stuff. That's what you want to do because you want an even team. Um, let's see what we got here else. Um, control impulse bidding. Uh, like I said, when you've got Adrian Peterson and you got him for, let's say, $60, which is I've seen him go higher, I've seen him go a couple dollars lower, don't feel like you just got to get this name. Oh, he's coming up. Oh, okay, Calvin's a, I, I really want Calvin. Calvin might go too high, man, and it's comparable receiver value out there. Let that go. You know what I'm saying? I've gotten A.J. Green for in the $30 range, you know what I mean? I've gotten, and even if I don't get a top one like that, I got Pierre Garçon yesterday for $14. That's what you want to do. You want to start, what happens is early impulse bidding is early on in the draft. Everybody's going to be paying, overpaying for every damn thing. Let them, let them do that because what happens when that happens is, especially if they're overpaying for crap out there, it really happened. This really what I'm about to say happens. You get to a point to where everything is a discount. Everything. You get to where you're getting Toby Gearhart for cheap. You're getting to where you'll get, you know, a, um, Andre Ellington for cheap if he wasn't nominated early enough. I mean, I feel some teams where I'm getting Wes Welker and Victor Cruz for, you know, $11 or something like that, you know. So 
you that's what you want to get to a point to where you are getting really good deals because the money has been spent up on that board so much and you want to pay attention to what everybody else is spending pay attention to what spots they fulfill um besides unless you got a real idiot league like i was in yesterday this guy got a aaron aaron, um, aaron Rodgers for like late 40 something dollars he went back and then get got drew Brees. And he went back after that and got Tom Brady. What do you need three quarterbacks for? This is the person, he, and somebody wrote it to him, and he was like, value. He'll see. He's going to be in last place. The last thing you want to do is do some craziness like that. Your money is is is, is limited. You want to feel everything, not just get good players because they're the name, especially when they're the same position. It's crazy stuff. Um and like that's good leads to the next thing I noted right here. Let the let the guys that are willing to pay that crazy money let them set the tone, because after that, the truth is gonna come out. When Adrian Peterson's gone and Jamal Charles is gone and Calvin's gone, when it's all said and done, guess what? The real players you'll see you'll see the real players have 150 or more dollars left when you've been drafting for about 20 to 30 minutes because they're patient. They know, they're watching people be, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but they're watching people be fools out there. They're watching people go all in, big money. They got to have somebody. Go ahead. Good players will sit there and let you do it. And good players will bait you, like I said, by throwing out a dollar player and watching people pounce on it. Um. If you make decisions during an auction that you wish you didn't make, like you've paid too much for somebody, and then now you know, oh man, my max is gonna be, my max bid is gonna be shortened now. Don't get bummed out about it. You'll be able to rebound generally unless you do it too many times. There is an address, auction I've done where I haven't made one thing that I look back and be like, man, I shouldn't have did that one. I, 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 I shouldn't have done that move. There ain't one time. So don't get down on it. Just rebound. You know, come back, look and look around, see what's out there value wise, and then make sure you make sure you you you're able to, you know, take advantage of the fact that, okay, I didn't do this, but this I still gotta fill this team. So start looking for value out there and at the max amount you're able to get. Also, use those final dollars with bottom slots to fill with potential flyers. Like, I'm in every draft I'm doing, and I'm giving this away, man. If I'm playing with I'm, whoever I'm going to be playing with, they're watching this, man. They're going to be jumping on this. But every league I, dra- I auction in, I'm getting Brandon Cooks. I got this feeling that Brandon Cooks of the New Orleans Saints, I got this feeling he's going to break loose as a rookie wide receiver who's going to be put all over the field. And you know what Drew Brees does, but Drew Brees spreads it so much that he makes fantasy value often hard for receivers. But right now, Marquise Colston is on his way out in terms of his ability starting to shrink. Kenny Stills has all the potential, had some promising plays last year, but we'll see. Mark, basically what I'm saying is Brandon Cooks comes in and replaces Darren Sproles and even more. I'm watching for guys like that. Guys like guys like Brandon Cooks, guys like I said, Terrace West, Carlos Hyde, these players that are in prime positions, Devontae Freeman, players that are in prime positions to be making well up their well up value much more than you can get them for. You can get them for a dollar and they you'll be they'll be worth 20 times that when the years that's what you want to look for. And I think I covered just about everything with auctions. Um it's it's also just a lot more fun than standard drafts because standard drafts ends up being generally even teams if everybody shows up and everybody kind of just follows the follows the the this rankings or your own rankings but you can completely screw up in an auction or you can completely just stud out in there and just win you know you can you can come away from auction just feeling great and nothing feels better than when you hear sold 
and you know that dollar amount was much less than it could have been. That's that's what it's all about, man. So, again, it's all about patience, and it's all about paying attention to what's going on. Don't be so quick to spend your money, and more importantly, don't be so quick to hold your money. So, make sure that you, you know, pay attention. And this video is running a little long, man. But anyway, like I say, auctions are a lot of fun. And I would suggest giving auctions a try. Don't be scared of it because you're not used to it. Give it a try. You'll see how it works. And you'll, I promise you, you'll enjoy it. So, yeah, you know, again, like the other video, subscribe, like, put comments beneath. If you got any questions directly that you want to ask me, any things you want me to speak about, any other type of videos you want me to make in terms of strategy or point out some things that I may have missed this time or on even the other video or any video, just let me know and, you know, I'll make it happen. So, yeah, for all uh, fantasy football real talk, that's it for now. And, uh, We'll check you later. If you need, again, too, you can email me and it'll be at the bottom of the description. So, um, good times out there. You know, enjoy your drafts. Have a good one. Oh, yeah. One thing I absolutely forgot, which was probably more important than that entire video before this. Um, never, ever, ever, ever leave money on the table. You're giving $200 to bid with and $200 to play with and field your team. Never be finished with your draft and then there's $42 up there that you could have spent. You can't take it with you. It's not going to mean anything after the draft day. That a lot of money is for the draft, not waivers, not anything the rest of the year. And I've seen it happen many times, especially with auto draft people, which I, again, in every video will recommend against auto drafting. Never leave money on the table. I've seen players be done with their draft and they got $42 left. That means you could have put money into more quality in any given position. Never, never leave money on the table. I can't stress that enough. So I forgot that in the last part of the video, and that's definitely something I want to add in. So take note of that. All right, that's it, though.